What's going on guys, my name is Blake and today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Premiere to export high quality videos for Instagram. Instagram's platform is constantly changing, so I want to give you an updated look at my export settings to give you the highest possible output for Instagram. The specific example I'm using is for a vertical 4x5 video for your main page, not for story or anything like that. But this is going to work for widescreen, for square, I just want to specifically go over exporting a vertical video. Uh, the reason why I like these vertical videos is because they actually take up more real estate on somebody's feed when that video is, is served to them and that way it catches their eye just a little more than a square a square photo or the widescreen. I'm gonna go ahead and put the three most common dimensions right here. Today I'm gonna go over that four by five aspect ratio. But like I said, this process can work for all aspect ratios that you output for Instagram. So let's jump right into it. All right guys, welcome to the tutorial section of the video. Now, I have a video here that um, is a piece of a larger video but I'm just gonna use this for the export. It's about like nine, 10 seconds long. Keeping it short just for, for this example so that we can crush through it pretty easily. You can also use an exported version of your final project. I prefer to use the actual clips rather than an exported version so I can go in and adjust them side to side if I'm cropping a little bit different than the video was originally shot in. I have my sequence here that I'm ready to go. The first thing I want to do is right click on it and make a duplicate sequence. That's going to get, and I'm going to rename it, you know, um, Instagram example IG. So I know that's the Instagram version that I'm working on. So here I have my new sequence. Uh, next I'm going to go right click on it and do sequence settings. Oh, the menu popped off the the second screen there. Um, I want to change the editing mode to custom if it isn't already in your sequence and um, change the frame size. This is going to give us new dimensions that work with Instagram so we know exactly what it's going to look like and how it's going to be cropped on the app. So let's go 1080 horizontal by 1350 vertical. So there that gives us our 4 by 5 aspect ratio. The maximum width that Instagram accepts right now today as this video comes out is 640 pixels. But what we're doing here is keeping it in that 4x5 uh, aspect ratio. And we're creating a video that's a little bit bigger than that 640. You know, Instagram's going to encode this video its own compression regardless. So we just want to give it a little bit more information than it allows so we get the maximum out of that uh, conversion that Instagram does on its side. So hit OK. Uh, it's going to ask your preview, your render files there are, are going to be gone, but that's all right. You can see that my video over here is giving it black bars. The dimensions of the timeline don't match the footage right now, but the next step is to go through, scale up your all your footage shot by shot. You can individually go in and scale up your clips one by one like that. You know, I've, I've say I got a little color on there, scale that up as well. So you can go in and do that and that allows you to position them left and right a little bit better frame everything up since our framing changed, our dimensions changed. So what I'm going to go through right now, I'll speed this up, I'm going to go through and reframe each shot. You know, if you have motion on a particular clip like this uh, this drone clip, you can see that I have, I've keyframed it a little bit. You can nest those things to make it a little easier like this. Go ahead and make a nest, okay, and we'll just, you know, scale that thing up as a whole. And that way we can protect a little bit of that that motion and everything um, but I'm gonna go through and reframe all this and uh, speed it up all right now that I have everything repositioned I'm gonna go through and render this so while this is rendering I used to build a ton of different export presets and that kind of thing uh, in Premiere, but lately with all the Creative Cloud updates and that type of thing, they've made it a whole lot easier. There are a ton of built-in presets that, that are really close to what we want, and we're just gonna tweak them just a little bit. We're all done rendering, and now it's time to export. So I'm gonna hit File, Export, oh yeah, Media, or Control-M, Command-M if you're on a Mac. Um, this is gonna work either way. So I used to build a ton of export presets in Premiere, but lately with Creative Cloud and all the updates, they provide a ton of built-in presets that are pretty much exactly what we need. So we're gonna take one and tweak it just a little bit to fit to exactly what we want. Under the H.264 format, uh, I'm gonna go to a preset, Mobile Device 1080p HD. Androids accept a ton of different files, but 
iPhones won't play a lot of codec codecs and file types, so I'm going to suggest this mobile device 1080p HD. Um, now the dimensions aren't exactly what we want. You know, you can see it right here. We got these black bars and everything, but it's a good start. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the video settings. Right now, the export settings it has is 1920 by 1080. We're going to check this box to match source, and it's going to match to the dimensions of the the sequence that we created. So there we go. Our our source is matched like that, um, and you can see that you know there's no black bars or anything. Oh, that's kind of a weird frame. Um, there's no black bars or anything like that. Uh, this looks good. After that, I'm going to come down here to the bit rate settings right here. Instagram, I've noticed, is not super consistent with its bit rate when it compresses your videos. I went and downloaded a ton of different Instagram videos from the HTML source. The length and dimensions didn't seem to matter too much. The bit rate usually lands somewhere between 6 and 8 megabits a second. So we're going to put ours at 10. Um, I'll just type in key in 10 right here. A lot of people assume that it's all about keeping your exports to a certain size so Instagram doesn't need to compress them, but Instagram's going to re-encode your videos regardless. It's about making Instagram ingest the highest quality video that you can give it to give yourself the best shot at the high quality output, maximizing their compression, so to speak. The next thing is, well, we already went over dimensions, and again, like I said, you know, giving Instagram a little bit more than it can handle, getting the maximum out of their compression. That 1080 by 1350 is plenty. Uh, next, we're going to go to use maximum render quality. Then back here, we'll scroll down video. We're going to render this at maximum depth. Check this box for use previews. That um, allows, you know, we went and rendered this whole timeline. That allows uh, Premiere to save a little bit of time and power by using those render files that it already created in the export. Uh, so make sure you name your file and you know where it's going, all that. Uh, and that's it. I'm gonna hit export here and we're good to go. As far as getting it on your phone, I prefer Dropbox, especially when I have a few of these to do at once. Google Drive works exactly the same. Both of those are file hosting websites first, so they won't try and compress your video. They'll just allow you to download whatever you upload to the site. One little thing, if your output is small enough, like say around 10 megabytes or under, straight up emailing it is um, is super easy. A lot of those, the maximum file size is about 10 to 12. So keep that in mind if you want to skip a couple of steps and just email yourself the file. AirDrop on a Mac is, is great. Um, obviously I'm on a PC, but Premiere works exactly the same on either machine. So um, if you have a Mac, use, uh, use AirDrop. So that's it. There's no exact way that you have to export your Instagram videos, but this is a way that I've found that I can get those nice crispy videos on my Instagram feed so that people can enjoy them as much as I enjoyed making them. I hope this helped you out. Keep creating. If you like this type of video, go ahead and subscribe. There's going to be a ton more. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.